There's literally dust on the camera battery. Alright, are we rolling? What's up guys? Thanks for stopping back by the channel. Remember the home of the auto shop life. I'm speechless. No words. No words. I apologize for the lack of content. You know, uh, with the warm weather hitting, everything going on, just uh, haven't had a whole lot of time to, uh, you know, be running videos. But I'm back. We got one uh, planned for you here. I'm going to show you guys some, uh, some new tools I've picked up over the last uh, two, three weeks. You know, getting here in the shop, getting things uh, rolling with at least my new normal and things like that. We're getting back into it. Uh, you know, uh, hope you guys uh, been busy. Hope you guys working. Hope you guys out there, uh, you know, doing what you got to do to get through this. And uh, I know I am. So, but we're going to get into one. A couple uh, pretty unique tools, I'd like to say. I've picked up probably the last three or four weeks. I know it's been about almost two months since my last video, but life gets in the way sometimes, guys. You know, you guys been asking, uh, you know, where I've been. I've been around, we've been here, been working, you know, dealing with the house, kids, family, you know how it is, but let's get back into it. Remember, it's the auto shop life. Check it out. Shut up and sit down. Cornwell, got a few from Snap-on, the normal, you know, online pickups, got a few uh, that were sent to me to check out. Uh, one pretty cool one in particular, this uh, iAmazing Jump Pack, we'll get into this one. I've had a few uh, weeks to kind of test that one and look into a couple of the other tools, haven't even been open yet, I picked up last week, but we'll share them with you here in a quick tool haul. First one from Lyle, I really dig, uh, part number 35070. It's a remote hose clamp, like, like you see, like a normal remote hose clamp pliers, but instead, this one gets those quick connects off. So it has little fingers, as you would say, at the end of it, you know, and you gotta figure, you get those quick connects on the top of the gas tanks or those EVAP lines and all that stuff where, you know, maybe you can't get it to the bottom of it or, you know, the pliers are too big to get in because they do make pliers just like this also. But this one being remote, set up just like the spring clamp pliers, you know, that Lyle makes and all that stuff. You know, these have little uh, fingers on it. You can get it to ratchet and hold it and all that just like a normal one. You can hold it in place. They open up. Let me get this thing unlocked. You can get them to open up real wide. And then, you know, you pretty much just get it around your quick connect, squeeze it, and then you'll be able to hold that on there while you pull the quick connect line off. Pretty ingenious. I, I mean, I, Lyle always comes through. Um, you know, it's, uh, I, I find myself buying Lyle products mostly when I'm on at least the Cornwell truck, but this one I thought was pretty neat. It does have the uh, replaceable cable so when the cable does wear out which they do uh, you can replace the cable not like the old version well, where I had you know where the cable breaks or anything like that you got to replace the whole thing bought it got a pair a normal hose spring clamp pliers from Snap-on we'll be showing you guys that pretty much the same thing all the parts are interchangeable and all that stuff but not a bad idea you know um, I, I think it's uh, pretty smart got a little spring in there good spring action there you can see how the mechanism works pretty much the same as this hose clamp pliers. You know, getting into this one, I think they should uh, follow this one. You know, I, I, probably uh, another good idea was maybe just some regular pliers on the end of this. You know, you could do uh, not just a quick connect. What was the other one I was thinking of? Well, I can't remember right now, but getting into it, you know, they should run with this one. I, I think this is pretty cool. Maybe they should implement, like I said, you know, needle nose at the end of these things, you know, pliers at the end of these things, maybe even like a little line wrench or something. You know, once you crack a brake line loose, you could kind of get a little small wrench up in there, you know, squeeze it to the size you need and then maybe turn it. You know, I, you know, I think they should take this and run with it. The remote pliers, you know, definitely are time savers, especially when you're tight on space. Had to pick this one up. I think I only paid about 109 bucks for it. Yeah, he, I don't know, maybe a little less than that. He had it marked on the Snap-on truck for 109 bucks. There's the part number for you guys. I'll also leave part numbers down in the description, but 
can't wait to get this one checked out on those situations where I really need it. Alright, so stick it with this spring clamp pliers, the hose clamp. This one's hose clamp pliers with flexible cable. I picked one up from Snap on finally. You know, I've been seeing this on the truck for months. I couldn't justify spending almost $175, whatever Snap on wanted for this. But finally ended up getting it. You know, I do have a few pair of these. Just wanted to check them out. And like I said, with these, you know, everything's interchangeable. You know, it says on the box, obviously you can change the handle, the spring, the cable, all that stuff is kind of, uh, you know, universal. So if it breaks or doesn't work anymore, you know, Snap on will warranty just the pieces of it as opposed to whole tool. We got part number on this one. What do we got? SHCP1B. And uh, I noticed with this one, it seems like you got a longer cable with this one. It's kind of nice. It's got a little groove at the bottom of it to kind of hold it together, keep everything smaller when you got it stored in the toolbox. But I do notice on this one, when you have them open, you know, they do open a little wider. So if, if you're kind of in a tight area and you got to get down in there, you know, these handles do open up pretty wide, you know, comparative to just the normal, the normal set that I use. And you can see, I mean, completely wide open, you know, it's, it's a lot bigger. The handles footprint at least is a lot bigger, um, you know, plus getting your hands around it. This one's more shaped, you know, for your fingers to groove in there. It's my old pair to have in there, but I mean, anything outside of that, it's pretty good. Once you have the locking mechanism locked, you know, the handles are definitely better to deal with, but you got to think that's already starting to close your spring clamp. So, but the latch works pretty good. You can definitely hear that locking into place. And then here's what I was talking about, about the pieces being interchangeable. You know, you basically just pop these out. I'm guessing they're just clipped in there and then you can change the cable, uh, probably the handles. If this thing bends or anything like that, you can keep the cable if that's good and then just replace the handle, maybe even the locking mechanism. But definitely had to pick them up. I like the, uh, like I said, I like where you, it's got a little home for the cable so that thing's just not flopping around the drawer. That way, nice and tight, space saver, throw it in the drawer, pull it out when needed. But like I said, guys, pick this one up for uh, about 165 bucks, 175 bucks. But, you know, it is heavy duty and uh, I wanted to see what it was all about. You know, it's, uh, it does all different kinds of hose clamps, you know, spring clamps. I personally hate those clamps. Um, you know, anytime I'm doing a job and you got those spring clamps on there, I tend to just replace it with a, uh, you know, regular hose clamp or something like that. You know, sometimes certain situations I will reuse the spring clamp depending on where it's at on it. But man, I really hate those. And then you always get them where they're upside down and you can't get pliers on them. So these remote, you know, spring clamp pliers work out perfect. So the next one we picked up from Snap-on, Slim Light. You guys know I love my flashlights. Picked up a Cornwell one, what, about six months ago? Can't remember. It's pretty much, uh, pretty much identical to the Cornwell one I picked up. I do use this one. These are nice, kind of just turn on, slap on top of a metal hood, or it's got the magnetic base on this one. You just stick to the side, turn it on. But, you know, comparative, Snap-on makes one too. It's a little bit thicker. Got a couple different features. Magnets are in a different place. This one comes with hooks. This one comes with a magnetic base. I love this light. I loved it so much. I went ahead and picked this one up to see what it's all about. But, you know, features on this one. It's got a couple hooks that it comes with. Um, it seems, you know, pretty cheap. It's, it's not the greatest. I mean, it doesn't even seem like it clips into place. You just kind of lock it onto the rubber there. Who knows if, it, uh, if it's going to hold up or anything like that. But they give you two of them. So you can kind of hang it like a light like that. You can hang it like that. This way it does have a magnetic little base in the back where it holds up. And then it's the button features. You got a light up top here. Hit it again. You got a light on the side and I'm pretty sure you hold it. It's going to dim. Yeah, there we go. You can see it dim up and down and then it flashes for the round robin. And then another one turns it off. So comes with a charger. I want to say USB type, uh, type C, USB type C. What do we got about maybe five feet there and then it did come with a plug so always dig it when it comes with a plug you know not everybody just has the usb or at least one available so i always like having an extra plug around plus i already have a wire for it so if i lose one from my phone or something like that i'm able to use it but definitely a pretty bright light i like it you don't have to have the uh you know the little clips on there you can kind of just use it as a handheld these things in your pocket feel a lot better than 
like a stinger in your pocket or you know a big flashlight comp comparative to what you're using you know you go to sit down with this in your back pocket not as comfortable as sitting down with this in your back pocket so if these are nice durable definitely a cool pickup through snap on always happens like I said guys been a little busy so hopefully the phone don't ring again but getting to this next one well finishing up this last one definitely a nice light haven't used this one too much because I'm still using uh, you know probably my third or fourth favorite light but snap on one now Cornwell one now got them both snap on slim light can't remember what I paid for it but been using it around not as much as been using the blue one still reaching for this one Having this one as a backup, pretty nice. Like I said, that it's nicer having it in your back pocket. It takes up less room, but in the same case, it's going to be you know easier to lose, you know, or drop down in between something where it's not supposed to be when you're working on a car or leaving it under a hood. So you guys pay attention to your lights. Make sure you don't lose them like I do. We'll get this one out there using it. Uh, wrapping up on this one, part number ECSHC042. And I want to say it wasn't that expensive. I, I even want to say maybe under 100 bucks, 65 bucks or something like that. I don't know. Ask your Snap-on rep. Uh, I'll try to maybe even leave uh, prices in the description of the video. You guys know me and my lights. I never have enough. I think the more blind I go, the more bright I need it to be. All right, getting to uh, the iMazing jump starter. And you guys know, you know, this day and age, lugging around, you know, an old school jump pack, it does the job. You know, it, it's, it's heavy, it's a, it's a little inconvenient. So, you know, picking up these lithium jump packs, tossing one in the car, tossing one in the wife's car, tossing one in the toolbox, you know, multiple uses on these things. You know, you're not only able to charge your phone, you know, jump off the cars, you know, it's got a little flashlight on there, SOS thing on this one in particular, you know, comparative to the Norco, you know, a lot cheaper. You're basically saving money buying into something like this. This one is pretty neat. Had a company send it to me. I will be leaving coupon codes and links to the description, part numbers down in the description, like I said. Um, this one's pretty cool. And it's, uh, you know, it's got a lot of features on there. One uh, that I did like in particular, I've got to show you the actual unit. Comes with a nice carrying case. And like I said, I've been using this around the shop. Charges pretty well, holds a charge pretty well. Um, I noticed when it's, you get it down really dead, you know, it takes a little bit to charge up. It's not uh, fast charging by any means, but the, uh, the cables are pretty neat. I thought they're uh, kind of staggered. So when you have this thing plugged in, you know, they don't accidentally touch, at least when you're holding the unit itself. It has the LED screen here that I noticed after you jump a car, when you unplug the actual battery pack, it'll give you the charging voltage and all that stuff. So, you know, maybe at a quick glance after you jump a car, you could kind of peek at it, make sure the alternator's charging and all that stuff. And then it's of course got the reverse polarity protection, overheat protection, all that good stuff built right in the tool. Um, some of the accessories it comes with, you got your uh, cigarette lighter adapter and it's got, it looks like a uh, type C charging wire, maybe for your phone or whatever you're gonna be charging to charge the unit itself. So basically you're charging your phone, plug this into the battery, plug this side into your phone, you're charging your unit, plug this inside, the you know plug or charge or whatever you're using to charge it and plug this into the unit so in and outs here's the unit itself and it's it's, it's pretty beefy I mean it's, it's not the biggest one you've seen uh, this one's a 2500 amp I believe what the box say yeah 2500 but it's it's got some weight to it here's the uh, front of it you got the flashlight you got the two USBs and I believe one is a fast USB charge what do we got here yeah, output one, you got five volts at three amp, nine volts at two amp, and 12 volts at 1.5 amp. So if you wanna charge, you know, maybe your phone or, you know, you're diagnosing a car, you got your tablet. That's one thing I really like these things for. And your tablet starts going dead when you're in the middle of the diag, you can just grab this, plug your tablet in, and still walk around the shop and use your tablet while it's charging. You know, just carry this along with you. It is a little bit heavier than a smaller bank that I'm used, used to using, but, and then you got the output to five volts at 1.2 amp, which is a slower charge. So give you dimensions on the box. Uh, this thing does range. It could pretty much handle the elements. So shops get pretty cold in the wintertime, gets pretty hot in the summertime, or if this thing's sitting in the back of a car, you know, it'll be able to withstand the temperatures. Um, and then they call that cable a smart cable. So basically it'll probably tell you 
not only voltage, but if you have any faults or anything like that, it'll probably you know show up on the screen here. You got your charge indicator, and then if you hold the light or hold the button, the light will turn on. Definitely pretty neat. And uh, you know, from the way it's built, seems like you know if you drop it from not too high, it's going to be able to withstand you know shop environment things like that, roughing it around and all that stuff. It also has you know some of the information on the actual unit, so if you lose the instructions or obviously throw away the box like I plan on doing I'll still be able to know which charging port charges what and then uh, get into the case the case is actually pretty nice it's got a little uh, net backing here to keep your accessories in you got the uh, charge wire to use it to charge which I'm really digging the USB-C type everything being the same because at the toolbox you know pretty much just hook one or two of these up and then just switch everything out you know as what I'm using and all that stuff and then it's got a little divider here too. So after you get the smart cable in here, that'll store nice and neat at the top. Tucks away nice in there, looks like it fits. And then the unit here, it's got another little divider. You put the unit down here, that way when you close it, you know, the cable's not scratching up on the unit and all that stuff. Zip this bad boy up. Toss it in the back of the car, toss it in the toolbox, pull it out when you need it, have it fully charged up. You know, you are able to jump your four cylinder, six cylinder, you know, all that stuff. I think diesels to eight lead, up to eight liters or something like that. I don't think the box, uh... oh yeah, so perfect for jump starting gasoline and diesel vehicles. Uh, your start amps is a thousand amps, peak amps is 2,025. So not too bad, you know, not too shabby at all. The iMazing jump pack, with the carrying case. Coupon codes in the description, you guys check it out. All right guys, getting into a couple smalls, a couple replacement tools. You know, I gotta lose tools, you know, or they come out with, you know, the latest and greatest tools, you wanna upgrade tools and all that stuff. Got a couple of them here I picked up through uh, the Snap-on guy. I think this, the charge light was three weeks ago, maybe these things two weeks ago, jump pack and all that stuff. Like I said, guys, it's been a while. I apologize. I apologize. We haven't gotten around to making videos. Still working on the Stivics. Still working on you know some of the other video ideas coming up on the channel. So you guys if you ain't subscribed. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're gonna get these videos pumped out here. So pick these three up. Still in the package. First one from Dent Fix. Uh, picked up another set of those little uh, you know body clips and all that stuff. This one is metal. The other set I have is more or less a plastic tip has on there these ones are steel because I'll tell you what guys on some of those body clips you know those little push clips they're a pain to get out I mean they're breaking on you they're everything else you know mind I have a few different tools that I use depending on the situation that I use to get the clips out or what type of clip it is but sometimes it always doesn't work out that way you know some of those clips are really buried in there or corroded or whatever so I picked up a metal set you know these are perfect it's got the little shape on it so you could kind of you know get it under the clip and pop it out the other pair like I had, like I said, it's uh, kind of plasticky, you know, so if it's stuck, it starts to bind and bend and all that stuff. This one's on a rubber spring, so just pop it in there. Pick this one up, a couple bucks on the truck. These things weren't bad at all. Part number on this one is uh, DF625 from Dent Fixed Equipment. Good guys, I, I uh, actually got a couple other tools from these guys. I think more or less, um, Players, I think it was. More players. I think they even do toolbox organization. I, I can't remember, guys, but I'll put the part number in the description below on these. Quick pick up there. And then I picked up these spark plug wire pliers. Now, I have a few different ones, the long ones, the other plastic ones that I use, but trying different things here, upgrading tools. You guys know the name of the game. Part number in this one, FZ7A. And then this one does, you know, the close spark plug wire. It's got some cartridge, it says some uh, cartridge fuse pull or two. Not really sure, but uh, that's another idea. This, this brings it to mind. I remember what I was trying to tell you guys in the beginning of the video. So this one here, the remote player, here's an idea for you guys if you're listening. Lyle, anybody, I ain't gonna take this and run with it. So you guys watching, you take this one and run with it. So basically, tool like this, remote hose clamp pliers, where it pulls spark plug boots off, those stuck, stubborn spark plug boots. So basically, how this thing works at the end of a remote plier, there you go. That's another idea there. So the one I couldn't think about, you got you know pliers, maybe a line wrench, whatever else on the end of these remote pliers, a spark plug boot wire. So you get those that boot in the back, kind of you know get it on there, 
and then just wiggle it off, pull the cable out, get that spark plug boot out. There's an idea for you, Lyle, if you're watching. Um, but yeah, another cheap set, players. We'll see how this one works. Haven't even opened this one. Not even gonna open this one. Um, gotta find a place for all these tools, but quick part number on that one. They definitely seem to be built pretty well. I'll put the part number in the description. Also, another quick one I picked up through Snap-on, calling these things. You know, I, hear, I live here in pretty much the Chicagoland area. Um, you know, it's a pretty dense urban area. Gotta have the courtesy mask. You know, talking about the new normal, you know, getting into some of these customers' cars, you know, whether they're older, high risk, you know, pregnant, whatever it is, gotta respect your customers. If they're wearing a mask, I'm definitely wearing a mask. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. You know, it's, uh, you, you gotta respect the customer. You gotta, you know, stay on top of your health and all that stuff. But, you know, these are to protect other people. Not to mention around here, you know, you can't even get into most stores without wearing one of these masks. But Snap-on's making them. They're actually pretty nice too. They have, uh, you know, a nice metal at the top that goes around your nose. Um, there's even a little interior part where you can put an extra filter in there or something like that. I bought a few of them but it's got the elastic straps that go around your ear. There is a, you know, a huge piece of metal in here to shape around your nose, and then there's a little pocket on the inside where you could put, I don't know, a fabric. So I, I really don't know what you, uh, you know, an extra filter in there or whatever you wanna do. Some people say like one with water or something like that, a fabric softener if your breath smells, but gotta put these on where I live in my area, you know, especially in these customers' cars. If I'm spending, you know, a good amount of time inside of customer's cars, I will put this on, especially if I'm talking or something like that. You know, maybe more or less the younger customers don't mind. Um, it's hit and miss, it's hit and miss, but I call them courtesy masks. You know, it, it's part of the arsenal of tools now. I gotta have them around until we figure out what's going on with all this COVID stuff. But Snap-on makes them. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Snap-on starts making diapers. I mean, what do they not make? Well, they don't make them, but they have a company that makes them for them. It looks like the same company that makes some of their t-shirts and all that stuff. So that's that one. And then getting to a couple of my Cornwell pickups, some more of my Cornwell pickups. A big shout out to Tim, man. That guy, a solid dude. You know, I, I really, uh, I'm really blessed to have a cool Cornwell guy, cool Snap-on guy coming to the shop. But Tim, always bringing those cool, unique tools. This one I got from Easy Red. You know, I'm thinking I gotta get more dash tools, things like that, you know, those small intricate bits and all that stuff. But pick this one up from Easy Red. You know, it's got two 45s on there. One end will do your bits. The other end, a quarter inch. You know, you got the direct switching directions, but these are nice, these small little ones, kind of getting around, you know, that little exhaust bolt or getting around that little tube, you know, trying to work that bolt loose and all that stuff. These work out pretty well. Built, like the fit and finish on it, nice and polished. Do I have a part number for SS8? And it does, like I said, the quarter on one side, hex on the other side, and then what I got to match is the stubby bits from VIM, which these are definitely pretty nice, um, but I kind of got them hand in hand. You know, you get these, at least, at least for the quarter inch kind, it's pretty nice. Talk about saving space, but you got the stubby bit on there with the small little extension, you know, working on those dashes or whatever, you reach around that, you know, that little wire or piece of tube that's in your way, you know, this is kind of nice, break it loose and all that stuff, being able to get on it. So pick those up through Tim Cornwell. I want to say for the uh, the Vim, I think I paid 125 bucks for this kit. We got uh, MMS450, and there's pretty much all the individual torques it has in there. Guys, I don't know how many uh, how many's in this set here, but it looks like a good fair amount. Looks like I'm covering some torques, covering some spline. You got Allen in here, you got uh, you know your flathead Phillips and all that stuff goes down to about two millimeters up to 10 millimeters. So I'm pretty much covered T50 all the way down to T10. So this will handle it for the stubby ones. Great one by Vim, great one by Vim. The uh, ratchet on the other hand, under a hundred bucks. This was uh, a while back, leave part numbers in the description. You guys check it out if you wanna know the prices. Last but not least, through Tim the Coral Man, used this a couple times. Still not sure how I feel about it, but it's a seal, seal driver. And it's got, you know, universal, you kind of set your size. I had a seal sitting around here, but I've been so busy in the shop, guys, I don't even know where things are anymore, but pretty nice. I think they make two different models of this one. Uh, ATD, made by ATD, but pretty much, you know, find your seal you need, or, you know, it might even be able to bang in 
a race or whatever you got to do, whatever you got to use for this. It's got a nice solid base, definitely build pretty well. You see that's where you hit it with the hammer. Um, but set your seal, you know, as long as it's not too big, get it in there, drive that seal home. And, uh, you know, it beats pulling out the kit with 50 other pieces and trying to match it up and all that stuff. These sometimes don't work well for me anyway, especially for seals. You know, if you have those seals where the rubber sticks out and all that stuff, I tend to just use a socket or, you know, a race driver or something like that to get them done. But this is nice for those flatter seals or those flatter races where they don't inset inside. We'll see how it works out. We'll see how it holds up. You know, it seems to be built pretty well. Moves really nice. But definitely a unique one I had to kind of buy and check out to see what it's all about. I don't think it cost me too much either. So, from Cornwell. All right, guys, so getting to wrap this one up. Again, apologize for the lack of video content. We're going to try to get back into things. Uh, status on the Civic, doing the computer work now. I uh, went from, you know, obviously OBD2 to OBD1, getting all that squared away. I'm going with Honda, to getting that taken care of on that one. So for you Honda guys, you guys Civic builds, you guys following the Civic build, we'll be up and coming on that and get this thing almost ready. I uh, almost don't like to work on it because I'm so behind schedule on it. I just kind of put it on the back burner for a while there. I wasn't going to do the turbo, I was going to put it in storage. Now I'm going to do the turbo and I'm not going to put it in storage, but we'll be getting back into that. Got some other things planned for the channel. So you guys make sure if you're not subscribed, get down there, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We'll get this channel up. We're at about uh, almost 13,000 subscribers, guys. We're getting there, we're getting there. I'm even getting subscribers even though I'm not making videos. I apologize, but if I'm not making videos, you guys can catch me on my Instagram. I do try to post there, you know, at least once a week and all that stuff. Got the, uh, you know, the handle on Instagram down in the description. So wrap this one up, guys. As always, like, comment, subscribe, and we will catch you in the next video. And I promise it's not going to be 55 days from now. Signing out.